All right, so now that we've uh, set up our first workflow, the Hello World, uh, we're going to start looking into some more uh, complex examples. So before we dive in uh, to our next workflow uh, for the cron example, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, the GitHub Marketplace for Actions and using uh, shared actions uh, in your workflow. And so uh, for our branch, we'll be using the two shared actions start. Um, and in here, you're going to see a cron example project. Uh, so we're not going to dive into that right now, um, but we're going to want the subfolder just as an example. Um, we'll dig into that further when we do the cron uh, workflow. And so uh, circling back to the GitHub Marketplace, one of the most powerful things about GitHub workflows is you have the ability um, to use other actions that have already been created um, that are small uh, components um, that do some type of functionality inside your GitHub workflow. And so uh, this is important because there's a lot of things that have already been set up uh, for you that you can take and use in your workflow without you having to go through and write the code and uh, do so. Um, so what we're looking at now is the marketplace here that's showing all of the published actions that are available today. And all these actions, we have the option to use these in our workflows. Uh, so just an example, we have the setup node JS environment. If we click on it, what this will do is it'll take us to this GitHub action and the particular latest version. It'll have the readme of how this works. Generally, a link to the GitHub repo. Um, so, if you want to help contribute to it, you can. And um, this is a great example because um, let's say in our project that where we want to do our cron example for integration test, and it's a node project. Uh, because in our workflow, if you remember, all we're specifying right now is this runs on, and we're using Ubuntu. And so we get the base image of Ubuntu, and if there's any additional tooling or any other setup that we need, we have to manually tell that uh, to the container and the job that we want those particular tools. And so let's say if we have a node project. If we have a node project, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to check out the repository that our code's in so we can run something against it. Uh, so let's say if we have a static like React UI, we need to build the UI so that we can push it uh, to wherever we're hosting it. And a workflow could do this, but we'd have to have access to check out the repo. Um, and you know, if it's React, we're using Node uh, for our dependencies, and so we'll have to have Node installed. Uh, then that way we can use npm to do our installing of the dependencies, um, run our scripts for our commands, and so on and so forth. And you can see, building up this workflow that we would do locally, um, we need to specify all those steps and how we're going to go about doing that. And this is where the marketplace comes in. So instead of us having to write code to you know clone our repository. Um, check out a particular branch, install Node, install Yarn, install uh, any other tools that we need. We can use these third-party actions that already have the code to, to do this. Um, so like this action here, you know, it'll set up the Node environment for us. We can specify the particular Node version, and to use it, it's just a few lines of code in our workflow instead of us having to, you know, go... Yeah, Go to the in Node website, download uh, this particular version, go ahead and extract the tar, and now make sure NPM is available. This action will do all that for us, and we only need these few lines of code. Uh, so this is where workflows are really powerful, because you can also create your own actions and share them with the community, um, and it makes them very reusable, um, and you can make them very small components, so they're very easily testable. Uh, so what we're going to focus on here is we're going to just uh, work on checking out our repository and our workflow and just checking what files are available to make sure that we actually checked out our repo. Um, so this is just going to be like an easy introduction to how these uh, third-party actions work. All right, uh, so what we'll do is we'll go back to our IDE. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new workflow file. Uh, so what we'll do is let's we'll do a new workflow file and we're just going to call this shared actions.yaml and what we're going to do is we're just going to copy um, the code from our hello world yaml into shared actions just kind of some boilerplate we're going to update our name to be shared actions example uh, we'll keep our workflow dispatch so we'll run this manually um, we'll go ahead and update our job name let's do checkout repo uh, we'll stay with Ubuntu, and then we're going to go ahead and update our steps. 
Uh, so for our steps, um, what we're going to want to do is we're going to use the checkout um, action uh, to check out our repository. Uh, so to do that, you have to use a particular keyword, um, uses. And so when GitHub sees this keyword, it will know to go into the marketplace and look for an action with this name. And generally, this will be a organization or username first, followed by the repo name. Uh, so in our examples, it's going to be actions. And it's going to be checkout. And we're going to do at v2. And so uh, what the at does is allows us to specify a particular version um, that we want to install of this action. And so in theory, we could leave this as action slash checkout. And what this will do is GitHub will download and install the latest version of this action, um, which is which is great. However, if there's ever any breaking changes or, you know, if someone introduces a bug into the main branch and it gets released, then we're going to check out that broken uh, version. Uh, so it's very important when you're doing your workflows, if you do rely on third party actions that you pin uh, to a particular version that you know that works. Uh, so this could be a release version, um, it could be a particular branch, it could be a commit SHA, so that it's tied to that particular commit. Um, so you can be very explicit on which part you want to check out. And so the other part of third party uh, actions is you can also provide parameters to them. Uh, and so generally it would be we do like with, and then we can provide additional variables to pass as uh, input. Uh, so if we go back, uh, to the example, you'll see in the readme that if we look for checkout, you'll see we have the official GitHub action for checking out our repo. You'll see it supports all kinds of parameters, uh, so like repository, a particular uh, Git reference, um, if you need a GitHub token, if it's like a private repo, um, and many, many more options for uh, checking out the repository. And so by default, if we don't provide any of these, our workflow is going to check out the repository that the workflow is running in. Uh, so in our case, it's going to check out our own repo uh, for the branch um, that we are running the workflow on. So it be our main branch or the particular sub branch if you're using that. All right, uh, so we've come back to the IDE. Uh, so in our case, we don't need to specify any additional parameters because we have a public repo um, and we're checking out the repo that we're working in. And the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to do a run and we're going to do an ls. And this is going to list uh, the files or directories that are available uh, in our repository after we do the checkout. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and commit our code and push it up to GitHub. All right, so now if we go ahead and go back to our repository. If we go to the Actions tab, we should see our new workflow. Um, so if we go to Shared Actions Example, uh, what we're going to do is going to go ahead and run our workflow uh, from the branch that we pushed to. All right, so once our workflow completes, we'll go ahead and go into it, and we'll go ahead and take a look. So if we go into our checkout repo job, uh, what we'll see is we'll see our two steps we talked about before. So we go ahead and set up our, our repo. Um, and so there's some new additional things. So You'll see here we're downloading the action uh, for checking out our repo. And so what GitHub does as part of the setup's job is if there's any third-party actions you're using, GitHub at this point will go ahead and try to download those and that particular version and make sure they're accessible before it starts running anything. So it does that as part of this um, setup job. And then if there's any cleanup steps to find inside that action. Uh, so as you see here, we'll go ahead and run those steps to do some additional cleanup um, before we do our complete our job and clean up our other processes. Um, so this is just important to note because if we reference an invalid third-party action, our workflow will fail. Or if we reference a version that is no longer available, uh, it also fail as well. Uh, so if we go to the uh, step for running the checkout, um, you'll see here we're running our actions checkout v2. And then what's happening is it's all those parameters that we looked at. Um, there are default availables that you could do on your 
action. And so you'll see here we used our repository that we're pushing our code to. Uh, it's using our GitHub token that's tied to this repo when this CI process runs. And it's using some additional things like SSH strict, fetch depth one, LFS submodules set to false. And so um, you got to be mindful of any of these actions that you use. Some parameters will have default values, and you just want to double check that they're set to what you want them to be. In our case, uh, this is exactly what we want. Uh, so then you'll see here now it's running the code that's tied to that action. Uh, so like it's grabbing Git, it's initialing or using a repo. Um, it's going to go ahead and set up the auth. It's going to fetch the repository. Um, check out the branch depending on what was referenced here. And so now you'll see we're tied to our main branch since this is where we ran the code. So then uh, we go ahead and execute our next step. So what all we do is did the ls, and so we'll see we have our license file, our readme, and then our cron example uh, subfolder. Um, so you'll see here we actually did check out our code, and we made it available uh, inside our container. And so you see, this is one small example of how we can use a, a third-party action um, that's reusable across shared workflows, that's reusable across workflows, and how we can start to build these very complex workflows by making use of some of these uh, actions that are available in the marketplace. Um, so then that way we can, you know, build these workflows fast without having to write everything ourselves.